the door to hell. In 1971, Soviet scientists and engineers were conducting an exploratory drilling operation in the Karakum Desert, which covers about 70% of Turkmenistan. Their goal was to tap into one of the country's rich natural gas reserves, as Turkmenistan sits on some of the largest gas deposits in the world. During the drilling process, the engineers accidentally tapped into a large pocket of methane gas, which is highly flammable. The pressure from this underground gas caused the drilling rig and the ground around it to collapse, creating a massive crater, measuring approximately 230 feet in diameter, about the size of a football field, and 65 feet deep. The collapse released a large amount of methane gas into the atmosphere. Fearing that the methane could pose a significant danger to the nearby villages by poisoning the air and leading to further environmental hazards, the engineers decided to set the crater on fire. At the time, the idea was that setting the gas on fire would burn up all the methane in just a few weeks, preventing a larger ecological disaster. What no one could have predicted was that the gas would continue burning for more than 50 years without stopping. However, the Darvaza gas crater has not been without controversy. Methane is a strong greenhouse gas, and although burning it makes it less harmful, the fire that keeps burning still adds to global warming. In 2010, Turkmenistan's president, Gurbanguly Berdi Mohamedov, visited the site and expressed concern about its environmental impact. He reportedly ordered officials to find a way to extinguish the fire, but no significant actions were taken to extinguish or close the site. The crater has continued to burn ever since, despite the environmental concerns. Tourists from around the world travel to see the burning crater, drawn by its eerie glow and unique story. Some even camp nearby, hoping to experience the unusual sight up close. The fire lights up the desert at night, creating a surreal atmosphere that feels almost otherworldly. Despite its dangerous nature, the site has become a symbol of curiosity and wonder, known as one of the most mysterious and scariest places on Earth. This burning crater shows how human mistakes and the forces of nature can create something unexpected. It still burns today, glowing brightly, especially at night, making it a strange and captivating sight. The Nagoro Scarecrow Village Nagoro became something entirely unexpected when it transformed into an unusual place where the population of scarecrows now outnumbers the human residents by nearly 10 to 1. This eerie transformation began when a former resident who returned to Nagoro after many years of living in the city found out that her hometown had drastically changed. The bustling life of Nagoro had all but disappeared as most of the younger generation moved away to pursue opportunities in larger cities, leaving behind an aging population. Over time, as the older residents passed away, the village grew quieter and emptier. After the passing of her father, Tsukimi decided to create a life-size scarecrow in his likeness. She dressed it in her father's old clothes and placed it in a field to guard the crops just as he had done in life. The scarecrow was so lifelike that it became a comforting presence for her and soon she began making more. Over time, she started to populate the village with these eerie figures, each representing a former resident or worker from the community. The scarecrows aren't just randomly placed, they're eerily positioned in ways that mimic the activities the former residents once engaged in. Some scarecrows sit waiting at the now abandoned bus stop as if anticipating a ride that will never come. Others can be found fishing, farming, or sitting in front of now closed shops, giving the impression that life is still continuing in this quiet village. Today, Nagoro has around 35 actual human residents left, but over 350 scarecrows are scattered throughout the village. The scarecrows have become placeholders for the people who once called Nagoro home. The eerie sight of Nagoro has gained international attention, and the village has become a minor tourist destination for those curious about its strange and haunting charm. The village also represents a unique form of expression, reflecting both the loss and the preservation of a way of life. The scarecrows in a way symbolize the resilience of the human spirit, maintaining a semblance of life in a place where time seems to have stood still. While some may find Nagoro a spooky, others view it as a testament to one woman's love for her community, even as it fades into history. Ayano Tsukimi's scarecrows have turned the village into a kind of open-air art installation. Whether the village continues to attract more visitors or fades completely into obscurity, Nagoro's story and its scarecrow inhabitants will remain an unusual and haunting part of Japan's cultural landscape. The Badlands Guardian 
When Google Earth first launched, countless people around the world began searching its maps looking for unusual patterns and formations. In southeastern Alberta, a stretch of the Canadian Badlands had naturally shaped itself into the likeness of a human face staring upwards toward the sky. From the ground, this formation isn't immediately noticeable, but from above it is. What's even more eerie is that it looks as though the figure is wearing a traditional indigenous headdress with feathered decorations on the head. The Badlands themselves are a harsh, windswept region, known for their stark beauty and eerie quietness. The land is made up of layers of sedimentary rock eroded over millions of years by wind and water, creating the striking gullies and ridges that give the area its otherworldly appearance. But no one could have predicted that these forces of nature would sculpt something so detailed, so human-like. Many people see the Badlands Guardian as a strong symbol. It looks like the face of an indigenous person, and some believe it protects the land, watching over important places from the past. They view the land as sacred, representing the spirit of their ancestors. Even though the formation was created naturally, it has an almost magical quality because of how it looks. Surprisingly, nature could create something that resembles a human face so perfectly, especially in such a remote area. The Badlands Guardian has attracted many curious visitors who want to see this unusual sight. However, getting there is not easy. The land around it is tough to navigate and to see the face clearly. You need satellite images or a helicopter ride to get high enough for a good view. Beyond its striking appearance, the Badlands Guardian also raises some deep philosophical questions. Is it just a random result of erosion, or could there be a deeper connection between humans and nature at work here? For those who visit or study the Guardian, it often reminds them that the world still holds powerful and unexplainable mysteries even in a time when we think we've explored and understood almost everything. Before we move to the next story, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and turn on the post notification. Also like and share with your friends. We need your support. The Ghost Town Once a thriving Soviet city, Pripyat is now one of the world's most infamous ghost towns, abandoned since the catastrophic nuclear disaster at Chernobyl in 1986. Its eerie silence and decaying buildings serve as a chilling reminder of the sudden and devastating events that led to its evacuation, creating a real-life post-apocalyptic landscape. Pripyat was built in the 1970s to house the workers of the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant and their families. It was a model city of Soviet progress, bustling with life. By the mid-1980s, it had grown into a vibrant community of nearly 50,000 residents, complete with schools, hospitals, a cultural center, amusement parks, and modern high-rise apartments. For its time, it was a symbol of Soviet ambition and technological advancement. In the early hours of April 26, 1986, reactor number four at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded, releasing massive amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere. The explosion was the result of a flawed reactor design combined with operator error during a safety test. The fire that followed the explosion burned for days, spewing radioactive fallout across large parts of Europe. Incredibly, the residents of Pripyat were not immediately told about the severity of the disaster. Life continued as usual for nearly two days, while the invisible danger of radiation spread through the city's streets, homes, and playgrounds. It wasn't until April 27, 1986, 36 hours after the explosion, that the government began evacuating its residents. Officials told them it was a temporary measure, just three days, they said, so most left their belongings behind, expecting to return soon, but they never did. It was abandoned forever, becoming one of the most irradiated places on Earth. To this day, radiation levels in parts of the town are too high for human habitation. Walking through Pripyat today feels like stepping into a moment frozen in time. The buildings are still there, but they're empty and falling apart. Windows are broken, walls are crumbling, and everything is covered in dust. One of the most haunting sights is the Ferris wheel in the town's amusement park. It was supposed to bring joy and fun to families, but now it just stands there, rusting and unused. Nature is taking over the town, with trees and plants growing over streets, playgrounds, and even creeping into the buildings. Without people, Pripyat looks like a scene from a post-apocalyptic movie, where the remains of civilization are slowly disappearing under the forest. The Island of Dolls In the 1950s, Don Julian moved to the island to live a life of solitude. 
According to local lore, shortly after his arrival, he discovered the body of a young girl who had drowned under mysterious circumstances in one of the nearby canals. Grieving for the girl, he began to feel a dark presence on the island, as though the girl's spirit had never truly left. In the days that followed, he found a doll floating in the canal near where the girl had died. Believing it to belong to her, he hung the doll in a tree to show respect and perhaps appease her restless spirit. Soon after, he claimed to hear whispers and footsteps echoing across the island as if the girl was still wandering its shores, searching for something. To protect himself from the girl's ghost, he began collecting discarded, broken, and weathered dolls, hanging them all over the island. Over time, Don Julian filled the island with hundreds of these dolls. Their soulless faces stared down from the trees, their limbs tangled in branches, their bodies slowly deteriorating in the damp environment. Some had missing eyes, others had no heads or arms, and yet they all seemed to watch over the island, giving it an eerie, haunted atmosphere. For Don Julian, the dolls were a form of protection, a way to keep the spirit of the girl at bay. But for anyone who stumbled upon the island, it resembled a haunting memorial to the lost. Years passed, and the island became known for its strange and unsettling appearance. Tourists and locals alike were drawn to the island, curious about its haunted reputation. But Don Julian never stopped his work, he continued to collect dolls and hang them in the trees until he died in 2001. In a chilling twist, Don Julian's body was found in the same canal where he had once found the drowned girl. Some say that the girl's spirit finally claimed him, while others believe he simply succumbed to the isolation and his obsession with the dolls. Today, the island of the dolls is just as eerie as ever. The dolls, now old and covered in moss, hang like guards from the trees. Their once clear eyes are now cloudy and their plastic faces have changed due to the weather, but they still seem to have a strange presence. The island has become popular with paranormal investigators who claim to have felt odd things while visiting, hearing whispers and seeing shadows move. People who visit the island say the atmosphere feels heavy and almost suffocating. The air is thick with moisture, and the canals around the island are dark and murky. As you step off the boat, the only sounds are the rustling of leaves and the distant splash of water. The Sea of Trees Aokigahara Aokigahara, known as the Sea of Trees, is located at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan. It's famous for its beautiful yet eerie landscape. The forest is very dense, with twisted trees and thick undergrowth that make it hard to walk through. What makes Aokigahara different from other forests is how silent it is. The trees are so close together that they block out the wind, and the moss-covered ground absorbs sound, making the forest incredibly quiet. Visitors often say the silence is strange and makes them feel uneasy, as even their footsteps seem muted by the thick, tangled plants. But Aokigahara is known for something far sadder. It has become a place where many people go to take their own lives. Because of this, it has earned the nickname, Suicide Forest. At the forest entrance, there are signs encouraging people in distress to seek help and reminding them that life is important. Although Japan has made efforts to improve awareness of mental health, the forest's link to these tragic events remains strong. Walking through Aokigahara can feel eerie, not just because of its silence, but because of the heavy feeling of sadness that seems to fill the air. Some say the forest is cursed. Local legends also add to the forest's dark reputation with ghost stories about the spirits of those who died there, being common in Japanese culture. Despite its sad history, people still visit Aokigahara. Some come to admire its natural beauty, including lava caves and stunning views of Mount Fuji, while others are drawn by curiosity about its dark past. For many, the forest leaves a deep impression, creating feelings of both wonder and unease. Aokigahara is a place where nature's beauty and human sadness come together. For all its quiet and striking scenery, it carries a tragic and haunting history. Whether people visit for its mystery, legends, or its dark reputation, Aokigahara is a place that stays in the minds of those who go there. A reminder that even the most beautiful places can be marked by sorrow and loss.